All right, we have some more bioinformatics worksheets to uh, work on coming up. Now, in the first two uh, exercise set, uh, the first exercise set, uh, worksheets one and two, we, we introduced BLAST and we learned about homology. As part of that, you should have learned about reading frames and splicing. That means like what introns and exons are, how they're formed. Now, there were videos over this and I got a lot of questions on these things. And I can only assume that it came because you didn't watch uh, the video. So I want to make sure you know that the videos are out there and where they're at. So the videos are here on, on, on Blackboard. If you go to Course Content, okay, uh, give it a second. And it says Bioinformatics and Molecular Biology. If you go under there, all right, and Bioinformatics Week 1, Give it a second. All right, we have down here, we have the worksheets, but if you go to the bottom, there are links to these videos. You need to watch these videos. They're somewhat important on worksheets one and two. They are very important on we worksheets uh, three, four, and five. So just showing now here are some additional ones that are suggested, but you know, you really ought to go ahead and watch these. These are not videos that I made. These are just uh, regular YouTube videos that people, other people have made that are also informative. Go ahead and watch those as well. But we have the general one, which is what is a gene, talking about uh, where your promoter is and your terminator, and that kind of defines where you're going to essentially uh, your RNA polymerase is going to copy the DNA and make an RNA. All right. We also talk about splicing and we talk about what reading frames are here. Uh, and we also talk about trans, uh, transposable elements. Now in video, uh, I mean, worksheets one and two, there was a lot of talk of transposable elements. Not as much about these things. And now what you're actually going to see is you're going to see an emphasis on one, two, and three in worksheets uh, three, four, and five. So you may need to go back and, and watch those as, and go ahead and watch the suggested ones down here as well. So just realize that's there. All right, now bioinformatics, uh, let's see. There will be new links. Uh, that's probably, hopefully, where you're seeing this uh, video. There'll be a link for this video, but go back and watch. I just want to say, go back and watch the videos because they're all relevant to the work to uh, not just the first two worksheets, but the next three as well. So coming back to our little page here, uh, let me explain what the two and three, I mean, uh, three, four, and five are in set two. So in these, you're going to be finding the introns and exons and the reading frames. And there were some questions, especially things like, what was a negative reading frame? Well, that's when the DNA goes in the other direction on the alternate strand. You also have three reading frames on that strand as well. And those are in the negative direction. So just keep in mind, if you see that and you want to know what the negative frame, that is in the worksheet and it's, uh, I believe it's in the video as well. If it's not in the video, it's, it is in the worksheet. So just uh, pay closer attention to the worksheet. The answers are there. And, uh, the vast majority of everything is there if you just uh, uh, work it slowly and, uh, and read everything. Now for this week, all right, uh, or I should say for this set, more introns and exons and reading frames. You still need to know about those. But we also have some information on RNA-seq. Now, RNA-seq, it's just a set of technologies that lets you measure the rate of transcription. Now, transcription produces mRNAs. And of course, those mRNAs eventually go to the ribosome and produce a protein. So what's going on here? What is RNA-seq? Well, it measures how many RNAs are made at a given time. That's the hot kind of the idea is to find out, well, what are your cells doing? What are they working on? What types of uh, RNAs are they producing at any given moment? <clears throat> and that's assuming that uh, eventually they're going to be turned into proteins and do chemical work within the cell. 
So the proteins do all of the chemical work inside the cell, or at least the vast majority of it. So it's really interesting to find out what your cells are up to. What genes do they have turned on? And then not only turned on, but there is some volume control here. In other words, uh, at certain instances, your cells can make more of a certain RNA or less of an RNA, which means, of course, they can make more of certain proteins or less. So it's sometimes a good idea to find out, are these cells, say cancer cells, are they making more RNAs than, say, uh, a normal cell? Uh, is this something that happens in this particular type of cancer? And then which RNAs are, are actually being made at this particular time? These are some of the things that you can do with RNA-seq, all right? Like I said, it's a set of technologies, all right? Laboratory methods, essentially, that can allow you to measure the transcription rate. It's, in other words, how many RNAs are being made. Being made. Now, the primary tool for these worksheets are the USCS Genome Browser. And for this worksheet, you normally would go, if you were using the USC genome brow USCS Genome Browser, it has its own website. But Washington University in St. Louis, that's what WUS, oops, shouldn't have done that. All right, Washington University in St. Louis has their own version of it that is specifically designed for flies. And these worksheets are, of course, designed to work on, on flies. So this one is a little faster, a little better uh, for exactly what we want. And these worksheets are designed to use this particular browser. So keep in mind that you need to go to this site. And it says it in the worksheet, but you may have overlooked it. And realize that this version of it is different than the general one, which has many other genomes on it besides flies. Uh, but we're going to be looking at flies mainly, and so this one is primarily designed for flies, and it's less used. Um, and the worksheets are designed for this version of the UCSC Genome Browser. So keep all of that in mind when you begin uh, exercise set two. Now, what do the worksheets look like? Well, here is module one. All right, and this is what is a gene. Now I gave you a video already on what is a gene, a very general one, but you'll need to read all of this. All right, and there's kind of some information here. Don't skip all of this stuff. Uh, you'll need to read and think about it a little. And then here are two more videos. All right, these are videos that go along with the worksheets. So there's a genome browser video that just kind of like tells you some stuff about the browser. It's it's not a super important video, but um, there is some information there. And then there's something called the tracks video. This one will help allow uh, help you understand why you're clicking on all these things and where all these things are and get, kind of get used to the terminology uh, that they use in the worksheet. All right, so you want to watch the tracks video and the genome browser video. So make sure that you watch those. All right, now here they're going to introduce it. All right, and uh, this one, is this the same one as up here? Let's see. Yes. So they're just repeating that you should watch this video before you begin. And then here is the uh, location of the browser that we need to use. Understanding that there is a UCSC genome browser but this is the GEP UCSC genome browser. A little bit different than the general one, which has many more genomes. This one is specially designed for these worksheets and for flies. So keep that in mind as you work through these. All right, read through everything. All right, and here are some more links. All right, I don't, you actually, this one you probably don't need to go to, uh, but you might click on it and see what it is. Uh, there might be some useful information for you somewhere at some point uh, in this class. Probably just not in this worksheet. All right, and if you just work through here, you should be in good shape. Uh, I want to scroll down a little here. Uh, this, uh, this is the tracks video. This is the second video that I showed you at the beginning. Now this thing can be kind of complicated, and I will tell you right off that I personally um, am not a big fan of this. I think it is clunky, and it is kind of 
ugly. I mean, uh, uh, there could be better graphics. This is kind of old school. I think that, you know, it needs to be upgraded. But there are these places you click down here. These are called tracks. And what the, they do is they control what you see up here. So if you turn something on here, if you start clicking these things uh, down here, what you do is you alter what kind of information you're given up here. And there can be dozens of these things, these tracks, which are going to add more or less information. And it makes it very busy and it's really hard to understand. Uh, the good thing about this is that you can't quite see it here, but up here at the top, you get to change, you get to zoom in on the sequence. So you can zoom in so that you see millions of bases in one line. Or you can zoom out where you actually get to see the actual letters along here. So that's really useful. And then there's just a general search engine uh, aspect to this so that you can search the organism or the chromosome. Now what you will see is something called a contig. And a contig is just a small piece of a chromosome that's been sequenced. So the large machines that sequence uh, DNA, uh, they, they're going to be organized into contigs. Contigs are what the machines spit out. The machine will spit out contigs. Actually, they spit out something much smaller than a contig, and then you put those smaller pieces into a contig. But essentially, the contigs are kind of how you organize the, the parts of the genome as they come out of the uh, machines and the, the sequences get assembled. So usually contigs are several thousand base pair, uh, 10, 30, you know, maybe 50,000 base pair, um, sometimes longer, but sometimes also much shorter. But these contigs are put together uh, to form the entire genome. And what you'll do is you go and you find a chromosome, then you find a particular contig on that chromosome, so, uh, and then you find a specific location for your gene. So uh, just trying to explain this, uh, they do explain this in the videos, uh, but that's just, just so you can understand what the term contig is. That isn't always clear in this worksheet. All right, so you will be, now here we zoom in and you get to see the actual letters. All right, you can see that here we're looking at a, at a gene and that gene uh, starts coding right here. Look, ATG, all right. And so these are the kind of things that you need to look at with the genome browser. I'm not a fan of it, but the cool thing about it is it's got everything in it. It does pretty much everything you might ever want as far as uh, sequence analysis. Uh, or maybe I shouldn't say sequence analysis, but uh, data retrieval. It has all the data in it. So all the data about every gene that's known, you know, so this one's based on flies. And this one, these people specialize in flies. So they're going to have all the latest information on flies and the genes in flies and the chromosomal structures in flies. Everything will be as up to date as you can possibly get when you use the, uh, the GEP genome browser. All right. So there'll be questions. How many exons does this gene have? How many introns? That's the sort of thing that you're looking for. So you'll need to know what an intron and an exon for. And I want to reinforce, go back and watch those videos. Uh, so here, they're going to be asking you questions. Uh, please go back and watch the videos so you'll know what's going on. All right. There are lots of things here. This is actually pretty easy. You just follow along and do the worksheet. You should learn a lot, um, and uh, you'll learn how to actually apply all of this to your gene. So your unknown versus the wild type. You can look at your mutant gene, and then you can look at your wild type gene, and you can go in here and look to see what happened. All right, you, learn, you learned about homology. You can compare the two using the technology we learned with BLAST. All right, we, use, we compare two genes or multiple genes with BLAST. You could do that with your gene and the wild type, all right, well, your mutant and the wild type sequence. You put those in there in BLAST and find it. And then you can also come here and actually visualize it and find out more. You might find that it's in an exon or an intron, or maybe it's somewhere else. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's in the promoter or something like that. Unlikely here. Um, we're just now learning to uh, 
look at promoters and terminators and realize that those are very important for mutations, especially in humans. We're doing flies. It's also important in flies, but in humans, they're beginning to, to look more at the mutations in promoter sequences, uh, less so in other organisms, because it's linked to uh, human diseases, especially modern ones like uh, diabetes, heart disease, uh, mental health diseases, uh, that sort of thing. Those are all found, most of those diseases come from mutations in uh, the promoter regions, not in the actual coding regions. All right, so once you go through these, all right, and you begin to look at uh, the introns and exons and you learn to use this tool, keep in mind as you're doing it, you're going to want to try and do something similar using your gene, uh, your mutation, I should say. Uh, yes, your gene, and look at the wild type, and then look at your mutation, and try to find out uh, some information about the two, how they might be different, all right, and uh, why your mutation may be a really bad mutation or a really good one. Uh, in other words, when I say bad, something that causes, a, you're pretty sure it causes a major defect in the protein. Because when you change these letters, you're going to be altering the protein, which is going to alter the chemistry inside the, uh, the cell. All right, so make for sure you read the conclusions. The conclusions uh, are very good at uh, kind of getting down to why you did this. All right, so make for sure you read uh, closely this entire document. All right, now this was the first one. We do have two more. Let me go there real quick. This one um, talks more about transcription. So when you watch the uh, all the, the various videos, uh, you might want to. Now here they have their own links here. So they have an RNA-seq Top Hat video. Now Top Hat is a slightly different piece of software. All right, and you can go there. And then a uh, short match video. So make sure you watch these and the software will be a little different here. You're still inside the uh, genome browser, all right? But you're gonna be doing slightly different things this time, and so that means you'll be clicking on different tracks and turning on different information down here, like you'll be turning on the RNA-seq coverage, and so you'll be interested in looking at that and pulling that data out of these databases and using it as you analyze your sequence. All right, uh, you'll need to read about all of these things and the videos on there will help you. All right, and if you need help, uh, I can help you, your TA can help you, um, but all of the information you need is here. Now understanding it has to do with how well you read this and how well you understand uh, the molecular biology behind it. Now I'm going to be making additional videos that talk about a lot of this, like the importance of transcription start sites, what are promoters, TATA boxes, what are transcription factors, all right? Now here we're beginning to talk about it. Now humans have these, flies have these, but they're gonna be different because humans and flies are so distant, they have different sequences. And these sequences come before the gene, right before in the, what we call the pre-promoter or promoter region. And what they do is they determine the rate of transcription. That's why the RNA-seq information is important because they these sequences that come before the gene, all right, and here these little blocks represent transcription factors, uh, they, you, they determine uh, how much and when uh, the gene is utilized within the cell. So are you going to increase the rate of mRNA in this particular cell type? Or maybe you only increase it at a certain time in the development of the organism? Or maybe under stress you increase the RNA rate? But that also goes, you can also decrease it in all of those cases as well. And the thing that controls this is primarily done here at the what we call the transcription factor binding sites and these are right before the gene. Now the gene itself whenever you see plus one that is going to be the first base in made in the mRNA so this is where you begin doing the copy so if you watch my little video RNA polymerase would stick where? Well it doesn't stick here 
It actually sticks back here at the promoter, the Tata box. So make sure you watch that little video that I showed you. And it's going to move in this direction. Now it doesn't immediately stop co start copying the uh, DNA in the form of an RNA. It's going to start where we say plus one. So this is minus one next to it. There is no zero. So the designation, this is a minus 40. So that means there are 40 letters back here. This would mean there are 40 letters here. This is the first letter. Uh, and uh, this happens to be a place where something else binds. Uh, it's the INR. It's a special sequence. And uh, it's not always there. Uh, different genes have different combinations of these binding sites. And uh, now we said that the TATA box was the promoter sequence where RNA polymerase binds. What we're going to find out is it's not always TATA. Uh, there are many types of promoters. This is just the most common one. Okay, so TATA box, INR, MTE, DPE, DC, these are all sequences, letters, all right, and you will need to go find out what these letters are. Now notice that some of these, TATA, -T -A, you understand, but what is W, or what is R? Like, uh, we know AGCT, but what are these? Well, they're, uh, they're various subgroups of the, uh, of the sequence, like purines and pyrimidines, and uh, I will also include a video going over uh, the what's called the IUPAC symbolism for the DNA, and they will tell you like R is purines uh, and stuff like that. So you'll get that, but uh, you need to recognize that these things exist. All right, you can learn more about um, RNA seq and top hat here. Top Hat is the software. RNA Seq is the technology that produces the data that you analyze using Top Hat. All right, and here's more of this. Now, uh, one of my specialties is identifying transcription start sites with computer software. So I will be giving an additional um, video on this, and then we'll have more videos on it as well. But transcription start sites are, uh, are important for identifying genes. Now also realize that there might be many transcri possible transcription sh start sites for a single gene. And we'll do, hopefully we will get to the worksheet where we talk about that. All right, again, watch out for these videos. All right, whenever you see one of these links, you'll need to watch it. And you have questions here to answer as you were go through this worksheet. And you will begin to learn how to use the genome browsers. A few more questions on this one, and there are three worksheets, so this is going to take a little longer to do. But actually, I think this one is uh, a bit easier once you realize it, um, it's really just clicking those tracks down at the bottom and then reading what it says up above. There's less thinking questions in the sense of what does this mean and um, that, but uh, it's just asking you, where do you see this coverage? Where is there no coverage? That's the RNA seq. All right, it's just asking you to interpret the graph. It's not asking uh, uh, too many thought questions there. So the, in some ways, this will be much easier. All right, now the, for the third one, um, it, we're still in transcription. All right, but we're going to be looking at something called pre-mRNA, five prime capping, three prime polyadenylation, splicing. All right, now I've already kind of talked a little bit about splicing, but I will talk a little bit about five prime caps and three prime polyadenylation. Um, and uh, you'll need to wait for those videos, but they're coming. And when you do, uh, we're still kind of interested in transcription start sites. Um, but you're going to be looking for some other parts now that we were not looking for in the other worksheets. All right, now here, it actually explain, does a pretty good job of explaining polyadenylation and five prime caps. Um, but uh, you, I will go over and make a video for this. And you'll need to, of course, click on the right tracks. And when you click on these, it alters what you see up at the top. 
all right what kind of information is given and so just keep that in mind that's what we're doing here and then you learn to read what this says and tell me what the results are so where does uh where's the signal for polyadenylation okay maybe right there and then you would read okay well that it's at 9860 something like that all right, now reading frame plus three, you're gonna need to go back and figure out what plus three, plus two, plus one, minus one, minus two, minus three. There are six frames, so keep that in mind. I will also talk about what UTRs are. Those are the untranslated regions. And just realize that you don't start creating the protein uh, until you get to an AUG. So there's a little piece of RNA out front called an untranslated region all right and now the ribosome reads this uh the reads the rna five prime to three prime all right so or i mean creates it five prime to three prime reads the dna three prime to five prime but makes it five prime to three prime i know i will give you a video on that but it means that what you what it means is you have two utrs you have one before the gene and one after the gene and this is going to be on the RNA, so keep that in mind. It's kind of hard to keep it all uh, in, your, in your head, and I understand that. And that's why I'm going to make additional videos explaining the UTRs. So here, that's a 3' prime UTR. All right, and we'll have signals for finding polyadenylation, uh, which is at the end of any gene, any mRNA that has to leave the nucleus, needs to be polyadenylated. And polyadenylated just means putting a bunch of A's on the end. Adenylation is A is adenine, so polyadenylation means adding a bunch of A's. And so there'll be a signal in the uh, in the sequence which will attract some proteins. All right, they'll attach and they'll add a bunch of A's. And I will talk about that in an additional video. All right, we talked much about fast A files. Uh, idea but we needed them so go back and do that as well but um, keep in mind this one uh, than the other two uh, but realize these are asking much more direct questions like at which base does exon 2 of the tra ra uh, begin what is its coordinate and so by looking at that at the result screen you'll be able to answer that and so that should do it. Wait for some more videos, and uh, you can get started on this. There's everything here, actually, that you need to complete it. After you watch this video, I think it'll be pretty clear. But if you want to know more about the theory behind it, I will produce more videos.